Okay, my desktop application just shut down on me while I was recording, so I'm going to have to re-record um, this video. I didn't get very far. I only got through this um, problem type with these examples, and I was starting the next problem type, but we didn't. I didn't get to get through it, okay? So for here, it says find all possible rational zeros using the rational zeros theorem. Well, the rational zeros theorem tells me I can find all the rational zeros by taking all the factors of the constant over all the factors of the leading coefficient, okay? But in order for me to identify the constant and the leading coefficient, you have to have your function in descending order. So this function that was given to me was not in the correct order. So we went ahead and rearranged it. We put the positive 2x to the fourth, then the positive 4x cubed, then the minus 9x squared, then the positive 4x, and then finally the minus 5. Now it's in descending order. We use the factors of negative 5, which are 5 and 1. We'll talk about the signs in a minute. And then the factors of the leading coefficient, which is 2. And the only things that multiply to give us 2 are 1 and 2. Okay? So then we did this 1 over each of these denominators. So 1 over 1 and 1 over 2. Then this numerator over each of the denominators. So 5 over 1, 5 over 2. And then we mentioned you could have any possible sign combinations of these four numbers. So really I have, this is just 1 plus or minus 1 plus or minus one half, this is just five, plus or minus five, and then this will remain as five halves, but plus or minus five halves. So you really have eight possible um, rational zeros, okay? This will come in handy because in the past problems, when we've been asked to factor a polynomial, they've always given us a zero what is eventually going to happen is they're going to ask you to factor it and not give you any zeros. And where do you start, right? How do you possibly think of what would work, right? What would give me a remainder zero so that I have a factor, right? Um, and this is that method that's going to allow us to instead of shooting in the dark, actually have some idea of some possibilities that will work, okay? Now, let's try that same process with this problem. So again, this is not in descending order. So we put it in descending order, x cubed minus 9x squared minus 7x plus 7. The factors of the constant here are just 1 and 7. The factors of my invisible leading coefficient is just 1. And then I did all the possible combinations, 1 over 1, 7 over 1, simplified them, and then put the sign variations on them. Um, so we have four possibilities here, 1, negative 1, 7, and negative 7. Now the next topic is very similar, it's just problem type 2. So we have to start with the same process. Put this in descending order first. And then take the coefficient or the factors of the constant so 1 times 9 and 3 times 3 gives me 9 so these are all of the factors and then the same for the leading coefficient which also happens to be a 9 so we get the same um, values there for factors so then now we got to list the combinations 1 over 1 1 over 3, 1 over 9. 3 over 1, 3 over 3, 3 over 9. 9 over 1, 9 over 3, and 9 over 9. List them all so that you don't forget anything. Then simplify, okay? And you never have to repeat a 0. So 1 over 1 is 1. need to write that one down either. Then I get one third. Okay, three over nine reduces to one third, so I don't need to write that one down. Then I have one over nine. 
and that's the only one like that. Then three over one is three. Nine over three is also three. And then finally nine over one is nine. So this is all of them, but again, don't forget the sign variations on each one. So we get one, negative one, one third, negative one third, one ninth, negative one ninth, three, negative three, nine, and negative nine. So you see this is the same process as the previous topic, but it's a little bit more lengthy because we have bigger numbers here. Okay. So we'll do the same thing for the next problem. This one is in descending order, so that's nice. I don't have to rearrange it. But I do have to write the factors of the constant, which is one times six and two times three. They don't necessarily have to be in order like I've been doing them in order. So I'm just gonna leave them like that. Um, and then for two, it's just one and two. And then let's start doing the combinations. Actually, I don't know why I made a big fraction like that. So we get one over one, one over two, six over one, six over two, two over one, two over two, three over one, three over two. So each one of these over both denominators, then the next one over both denominators, then the next one over both denominators, finally the last number over both denominators. That's the way you get all of them. Then start to simplify. One over one is one, so is two over two. One over two is a half, and I don't have any other halves. Six over one is six, Six over two is three. Two over one is two. Three over one is also three, but we already have it here. And then finally, three over two. And then don't forget all the sign variations of each number. So we get one, negative one, one half, negative one half, six, negative six, three, negative three, two, negative two, three halves, negative three halves. Okay, next topic, which is exactly what I thought was gonna happen. They're saying use the rational zero, rational zeros theorem to find all zeros of the polynomial. So they're not necessarily asking us to use the zeros to factor it just yet. They just want us to find all the zeros, okay? So we have to do the synthetic division with one zero, and then once we have the a, b, and c, we can use the quadratic formula to find the last two zeros. But we don't have a zero that's been given to us. So we have to figure out where to start with, what to start with. So we're going to um, try this. So 35, it's already in descending order. So the factors of 35 are 1 and 35, um, and 5 and 7. And then the factors of 2 are 1 and 2. So we get 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 35 over 1, 35 over 2, 5 over 1, 5 over 2, 7 over 1, 7 over 2. So we get 1. 1 half, 35, 35 over 2, 5, 5 over 2, 7, and 7 over 2. And again, of course, all the sign variations for each one, right? Now, this is where I'm going to not cheat, but really, if I really understand what's going on here with the zeros and the factors and the factor theorem and the remainder theorem and all these theorems, right? If I really understand those theorems and those ideas, I can make this simpler for myself because we know that K is a zero if x minus k is a factor. And we know that x minus k is a factor or that k is a zero if the remainder equals zero 
for that K value in the synthetic division, right? However, so what I need to do is I need to do the, um, I need to find the remainder for each one of these numbers. Now there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's 16 options here because of the positive versions of them and the negative versions of them. And so I would have to do synthetic division 16 times, possibly, right? 16 times to figure out which one of those guys is going to give me zero as my remainder, right? That's a lot of work, okay? Or I could take advantage of my um, remainder theorem that says P of K equals the remainder. And since I want the remainder to equal zero, I just need to figure out if P of K equals zero. And I, this is wonderful because I know the old school way of finding P of K, right? The old school way of finding the value is just plugging that number in. I would much rather use my calculator and its programming capabilities to plug in 16 numbers than to sit here and do synthetic division 16 times, okay? So that's exactly what we're gonna do, is one by one, we're gonna start plugging these into our calculator. So the first one is, is to plug in positive one. So let me do one store x. Now I'm gonna program my polynomial. Two x to the third plus 23x squared plus 58x minus 35. Make sure that that looks exactly like what's on my paper and hit enter. And it's gonna plug in positive one for me. But notice I did not get zero. So we move on to the next one. We plug in the negative version. So then I'm gonna plug that in, I get negative 72. So one is obvious, one or negative one is obviously not going to work. Now we're gonna plug in one half. So one over two, and then plug it in. Ah, we get zero for one half which means one half work, okay? So I don't need to continue through all of this process. Um, as soon as you get one, you can stop. So what this tells me is if I put one half on the outside of my synthetic division, I should get a remainder of zero, right? So let's see our coefficients are two, positive 23, positive 58, and negative 35. One half times two is one. If I add those, I get positive 24. One half of 24 is positive 12. I get 70 positive. One half of positive 70 is positive 35 and then I get my remainder of zero, okay? So I know that this is a zero, right? It's asking me to find, find all zeros. So I have one. How many more do I need? This started off with the highest exponent of three. So even though I have one, I still need to find the other two. And I now have, the a, b, and c that I need for the quadratic formula, and that should give me the other two. Square root of 16 is 4. 
So I get negative 6 plus or minus 1, which means I get negative 6 plus 1, which is negative 5, and negative 6 minus 1, which is negative 7. Okay? Now, if I would have continued this process, when I plugged in negative 5, I would have ended up with a 0. And if I plugged in negative 7, I would have ended up with a 0 again. And I would have known that those are my two answers. The reason why I did not do that is because I really like one process for all problems, right? And if you notice, this is the same process that we've been doing. As soon as we knew a zero, we would do synthetic division. And then once we had A, B, and C, we would do the quadratic formula to find the other two, okay? This is important to follow this process because if the zeros are rational or real, okay, actually just rational, meaning a whole number or a fraction, then this method will give me all the answers just by finding all the people with the remainder of zero. However, if the zeros are irrational, I'm not gonna find all of them using this method by just plugging in the numbers and seeing which ones give me zero. And if my zeros are complex, again, I'm not going to get all the answers by plugging in these things to see how many give me zero. So I don't plug in all 16 of these numbers and see which ones give me zero to find all of my answers. What I do is I plug them in until I get one and then I do the same process for everybody, okay? So no matter what topic you're on, no matter what kind of zeros you're gonna end up with, if you follow this process, you'll get all of them, okay? So this is another zero, and this is the last zero. So it wanted me to find all zeros, and because it's a cube, I should end up with three zeros. And I have found all three, positive one half, negative five, and negative seven. Now, eventually they might ask me to put it in factored form, but for this topic, it doesn't. It just wants me to find the zeros, and once I find them, stop, okay? So I'm just gonna stop here. Now, let's try another one, okay? So, same thing, want me to give them all the zeros. They didn't give me anywhere to start with, so I'm gonna do my possible rational zeros theorem. So the factors of seven over the factors of um, six. So I get one over one, one over two, one over three, one over six, seven over one, and seven over six. Oh, I have an eraser here. I'm not going to rewrite that whole list. I'm just going to write 7 over 1 as 7, and I'm going to write 1 over 1 as 1. And then, of course, you have the sign variation of any one of these numbers, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So let's see which ones will give us a remainder of 0. So we're going to plug in 1 and negative 1. So let's see. First, I'm going to store 1 because that's the first number I'm plugging in. And then I'm gonna write my function in here. So six x to the third minus 41 x squared minus eight x plus seven. And I get negative 36. Then do negative one store x and go plug it in. Oops, I went too far, there we go. I get negative 32. I'm gonna skip the fraction, like the whole numbers first, so let's try seven next, and then if we have to, we'll go into the, to the negatives. I mean into the fractions, I'm sorry. Oh, I get one, zero, for seven, okay? So I can stop. We know seven is going to give us a remainder of zero. So we have 6, negative 41, negative 8, and 7. So bring down the first number, multiply, combine, multiply, combine, multiply, and we get that 0. 
And then we already know the A, the B, and the C for the quadratic formula. So we get negative B plus or minus B squared minus 4 A C all over 2 times A. It's 24, so I get 25 over 12. So we get negative 1 plus or minus 5 over 12. Negative 1 plus 5 over 12. Negative 1 minus 5 over 12. So that's positive 4 over 12. That's negative 6 over 12, which gives me 1 third and negative 1 half. So if I would have plugged in 1 third and negative 1 half, it would have also gotten the 0. But again, that's only if these two answers are rational. They could be irrational, meaning they could have square roots in them, right? This wasn't a perfect square, and then my final answer would have square roots. Or they could be complex. This could have a negative, and then my final answer would have imaginaries, okay? And you'll only get those other kind of answers if you do this method with the quadratic formula, okay? So my zeros are going to be 7 that I found first, and then 1 third and the negative one half we found from the quadratic formula. So this is the same topic. It's just telling me that after I do the quadratic formula, guess what? We're still going to have square roots in our final answers. Okay, but it's the same thing. So start off with your possible zeros. So one and three for the constant, one and seven for the leading coefficient. 1 over 1 is 1, 1 over 7, 3 over 1 is 3, 3 over 7, and then they all the sign combinations of each one, right? And then start testing. So h of 1, h of negative 1. I like to do the whole numbers first, and then if I have to, I'll go into the fractions, okay? But let's see. 1 store x. And then program my com my um, function here. I get negative eight. Then do negative one store x. Plug that in. I get negative twenty three store x. I get thirty six negative three store x. I get negative 3, 3, 6. So unfortunately, I have to go into the fractions. So let's try 1 7 and negative 1 7 next. Oops, I didn't type that in the right. Delete, delete. The whole thing stores x. There we go. Go back to my function. Nope, that's definitely not 0 negative 1 over 7 stores x. That is not. Let's try the last option, which is 3 sevenths and then negative 3 sevenths. Aha, we finally got the 0, OK? So that means if I use 3 sevenths here, I should end up with the remainder of 0. So my coefficients are 7, negative 17, negative x, and positive 3. So bring down the 7. 3 sevenths times 7 is positive 3. Here I get negative 14. 3 sevenths times negative 14 is negative 6. And I made a mistake here, only numbers go in here. So I should have only written the number there, which is negative one. Okay, and if you don't believe me on the multiplication, you can multiply it. I can multiply fractions, most fractions in my head. Um, but if you're not sure, just type it in the calculator and it'll tell you what three sevenths times negative 14 is. Um, I just can do most of these, so I just choose to do them. It saves me time doing it in my head versus doing it in the calculator. But if I ever second guess myself what I'm doing in my head, I always use the calculator as a backup. 
um, because I'd rather be safe than sorry and continue with a bunch of wrong numbers, right? Okay, um, so that means this is my A, my B, and my C. So I'm going to do negative all over two times A. Okay, so we get these two things as our zeros after simplifying the quadratic formula. So all of our zeros are 3 sevenths, 1 plus square root of 2, and 1 minus square root of 2. Um, and I'm just verifying because I did this part in my head. I just typed in the calculator just to make sure that I did that part correctly. And then I put each term over 14, and then I simplified each of those two terms. Okay, so this is my final answer for that particular problem. Okay, I'm going to do another example, but this video is getting kind of long, so I'm going to stop this one here.